हेलो फ्रेंड्स इट इज़ वेरी नेसेसरी टू नो बेसिक कंसेप्ट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द सिक्स सिग्मा स्टडी आई ऑलरेडी कवर्ड सम ऑफ देम इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन कंट्रोल चार्ट विच इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यूज एवरीवेयर इन एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेसेस टू स्टडी हाउ ए प्रोसेस चेंजेस ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम द कंट्रोल चार्ट वॉज इन्वेंटेड बाय वॉल्टर एशीवाट वाइल वर्किंग फॉर द बे लैब्स इन द नाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज द कंपनीज इंजीनियर्स हैड बीन सीकिंग to improve the reliability of their telephony transmission systems because amplifiers and other equipment had to be buried underground there was a stronger business need to reduce the frequency of failures and repairs by 1920 the engineers had already realized the importance of reducing variation in a manufacturing processes moreover they had realized that continual process adjustment in reaction to the non conformance actually increased variation and degrade the quality She would frame the problem in terms of common and special cause of variation on May 16, 1924. He wrote an internal memo introducing the control chart as a tool for distinguishing between the two. She would created the basis for the control chart and the concept of a state of statistical control by carefully designed experiments. While she would do the pure mathematical statistical theories, he understood that data from physical processes typically produce a normal distribution curve. also commonly referred to as a bell curve he discovered that observed variation in manufacturing data did not always behave the same way as data in nature she what concluded that while every process displays variation some processes display controlled variation that is natural to the process while others display uncontrolled variation that is not present in the process at all the times so let's begin the learning of control chart control chart the control chart is a graph used to study how a process changes over the period of time data are plotted in time order a control chart always has a center line for the average an upper line for the upper control limit and a lower line for the lower control limit these lines are determined from the historical data by comparing current data to these lines you can draw conclusions about whether the process variation is consistent or is unpredictable i will explain the concept of normal cause variation and special cause variation and how to detect the presence of special cause with some examples in few minutes when to use a control chart when controlling ongoing processes by finding and correcting problems as they occur when predicting the expected range of outcomes from a process when determining whether the process is stable that is in statistical control or not when analyzing patterns of process variation from special causes or common causes when determining whether your quality improvement project should aim to prevent specific problems or to take the fundamental changes to the process before going to the selection of chart type and procedure to create a control chart let's discuss some of the important concepts related to it what are control limits the control limits of your control chart represents your process variation and help indicate when your process is out of control Control limits are the horizontal lines above and below the center line that are used to judge whether a process is out of control. The upper and lower control limits are based on the random variation in the process. For example, this x bar chart displays the length of manufacturing camshafts over time. Two points are above the upper control limit. These out of control points indicate that the camshafts in these subgroups are longer than the expected. Do not confuse control limits with the specification limits. Control limits are based on the process variation and specification limits are based on the customer requirements. A process can be in control and it not be capable of meeting the specifications. What is center line on a control chart? The center line of your control chart represents your actual process average, not necessarily your desired process average. The center line is a horizontal reference line on a control chart that is the average value of the charted quality characteristic. Use the center line to observe how the process performs compared to the average. If a process is in control, the points will vary randomly around the center line. For example, this x bar chart displays the length of manufactured camshafts over the time. The center line shows the process mean. The subgroup means vary randomly around the process mean. Do not confuse the center line with the target value of your process. The target is your desired outcome, not the actual outcome. Variation. Every piece of data which is measured 
will show some degree of variation. No matter how much we try, we would never attain identical results for two different situations. Each result will be different from the other. Variation may be defined as the numerical value used to indicate how widely individuals in a group vary. Common cause variation and special cause variation. Control charts are used to monitor two types of process variation. Common cause variation and special cause variation. Some degree of variation will naturally occur in any processes. Common cause variation is a natural or expected variation in a process. Special cause variation is unexpected variation that results from unusual occurrences. It is important to identify and try to eliminate special cause variation. Out of control points and non-random patterns on a control chart indicate the presence of special cause variation. Let's take an example. Write the letter A three times using your dominant hand. Three times with your other hand and then again two times with your dominant hand. Make all of them the same. Are they the same? Why or why not? The dominant hand created variation because of the pen or paper you have used, friction of your hand, etc. etc. This is common cause variation. It is inherent in the process. Using the non-dominant hand clearly shows something very different. This is a special cause. It does not always happen in the process of writing. Then what are the actions we should take in case of common cause and special cause? In common cause, recognize the variability inherent in the process. Responding to this variation is a waste of time. However, the more variation, the lower the reliability. To change the results, change the process. For special cause, differentiate it from the common cause variation. Find out what happened, eliminate or minimize the impact of negative and build the positive impact into the process. Using test for special causes in a control chart. Nelson rules are a method in process control of determining if some measured variable is out of control. Rules for detecting out of control or non randomable conditions were first postulated by Walter A. Shewart in the 1920s. The Nelson rules were first published in the October 1984 issues of the Journal of Quality Technology in an article by Leo D. S. Nelton. The rules are applied to a control chart on which the magnitude of some variable is plotted against time. The rules are based on the mean value and the standard deviation of the samples. The dashed horizontal lines in the following illustration represents distances of 1 sigma and 2 sigma from the center line. Test 1 1 point more than 3 sigma from the center line. Test 1 evaluates the pattern of variation for stability. Test 1 provides the strongest evidence of lack of control. If small shifts in the process are of interest, test 2, 5 and 6 can be used to supplement test 1 to create a control chart with greater sensitivity. Test 2, 9 points in a row on the same side of the center line. Test 2 evaluates the pattern of variation for stability. If small shifts in the process are of concern, test 2 can be used to supplement test 1 to create a control chart with greater sensitivity. Test 3, 6 points in a row, all increasing or all decreasing. Test 3 detects a trend or continuous movement up or down. This test looks for a long series of consecutive points without a change in direction. Test 4, 14 points in a row, alternating up and down. Test 4 detects the presence of a systematic variable. The pattern of variation should be random, but when a point fails test 4, it means that the pattern of variation is predictable. Test 5 2 out of 3 points more than 2 sigma from the center line on the same side. Test 5 evaluates the pattern of variation for small shifts in the process. Test 6 4 out of 5 points more than 1 sigma from the center line on the same side. Test 6 evaluates the pattern of variation for small shifts in the process. Test 7 15 points in a row within one sigma of center line on either side. Test 7 identifies a pattern of variation that is sometimes mistaken as a display of good control. 
This type of variation is called as stratification and is characterized by points that follow the center line too closely. Test it. 8 points in a row more than 1 sigma from the center line on either side. Test 8 detects a mixture pattern. A mixture pattern occurs when the points tend to avoid the center line and instead fall near the control limits. Which test you should use to detect specific patterns of spatial cause variation? Apply certain tests based on your knowledge of the process. If it is likely that your data might contain particular patterns, you can look for them by choosing the appropriate test. Adding more tests makes the chart more sensitive but may also increase the chance of getting a false signal. When you use several tests together, the chance of obtaining a signal for lack of control increases. As this is a very critical concept, I am taking little time to explain the control chart so that you can understand it in a better way. Please have a study of it so that latter part will be very easy. The remaining part like types of control chart, how to select a control chart based on data, which test you should select in determining special cause based on the data and to avoid false signal and thereby to avoid the tempering to the process and many more in the next video. Your valuable views, likes and comments encourages me to put my efforts in a deeper level. Do not forget video if you have found it useful. Add your valuable comments and suggestions regarding this video as well as my channel. Share this video with all your friends and families who need it and subscribe my channel. I will share similar useful information with you which will help you to improve your knowledge and skills in the future. To get notifications of new videos on my channel, please go to YouTube settings, notifications, learn and apply and click on the bell icon. This is a recent mandatory requirement of YouTube to get the notifications. And finally, thank you for watching.